Hey everybody, welcome to part 12 of Who Are the Grey Knights. We're going to go back to their true names again. Get right into it here, where we left off. <clears throat> During the long days and months of training, these men have no names. Only the designation given to them by the chapter. Those that fall are buried in unmarked graves, if they're buried at all. The tiny fraction of recruits that survive the grueling trials on Titan and the process of genetic implantation are finally gifted with new names. Each one is derived from the true name of a demon, a counter to its terrible meaning, so that even to hear the Grey Knight's name spoken aloud causes the warp creature pain. And to stand in the presence of a battle brother is the purest of agonies. Wham! There's a fairly vivid description and to the point. A Grey Knight has his true name erased as the first step of his training. His name, whatever his name is, it's erased in his past. That's his true name. He's then given a title. A title, not a name, because it can't be. You can only have one true name. He's then given a title, which is derived from the true name of a demon. The counter of it, in some way. So, since most demon names are probably titles, they're saying this would be the title. It is the inverse of some demon's name spoken in demon language. So, you're never actually going to get uh, a knight to actually say his name, I guess. I, whatever those are, they're, they're nicknames. So, let's go on. Words of banishment. Demons are beings of the immaterium and are made up of the very stuff of chaos. This makes them creatures of nightmare, rage, and fear, crafted from the base emotions and thoughts of mankind. When fighting such a foe, strength of will and faith are as deadly as blades and bolt rounds. Flesh tearing and ichor spilling with but a word of power. A Grey Knight will learn these words by heart and use them in battle to weaken or destroy demonic forces, chanting them as he fires his hammering shots from his storm bolter or cleaves apart his enemies with his nemesis force halberd. The words are key to the most complex rituals of the Grey Knights, woven into their prayers and their rites of exorcism to increase their potency. There you go. You've basically just heard Grey Knight Kung Fu is what they're saying. They're literally describing the fighting style, the unique fighting style of the Grey Knights, that as they fight, they are actually also carrying out basically a banishment and exorcism ritual at the same time. Each knight is chanting out some words of power in some complex ritual at the same time as they're actually chopping things into little ghibli bits. So the whole entire thing it, as a whole is a ritual. It's not just, oh, I'm going to go and, and fight that guy over there. They, it, it, the entire thing is an exorcism from beginning to end <clears throat> there which is and trying to do that okay never mind there are 666 known words of banishment each one a closely guarded secret by the chapter and learned at great cost most men that took up a word of banishment will lose their minds it's eye-searing symmetry and terrible definition, breaking all but the strongest of wills. Listen to what that just said. Most men who look, just look at a word of banishment 
inscribed on something will blow their minds. Which is lucky there's so many women out there because apparently they can handle it. Maybe that's the Bene Gesserit thing. You know, they can they can see it's the opposite, right? The, 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 you needed the Kwisat Haderach to go where the Bene Gesserit cannot see. Ah, never mind. Sorry, I digress. So there are 666 of those words of banishment. They know them all. Just writing it down blows your mind. Um... Even a Grey Knight battle brother must temper his spirit before he learns even the most basic of these words. To date, only a single Grey Knight, Supreme Grand Master Janus, you got a name, has ever learnt all 666 words of banishment. The weight of this knowledge, almost too much, for even the most accomplished of battle brothers to bear. Boom. More little tidbits for you, huh? Only one person ever learned 660. So that's kind of a, you. if you want to know about an internal ranking structure, for example. Now, if you're wondering when you read the codex, how does somebody get chosen to become a purifier, for example? What makes a paladin different from a purifier, different from a prognosticator? Well, now you've got a fluff cornerstone for that. You can say, well, you know, these purifiers, what sets them apart from the other brotherhood is that they've learned X amount of words of banishment that other battle brothers could not master. They've gotten through 333 of them. Because of that, they can now be a purifier. And if you're at 200 of them, you can be a paladin. And some might not master more than 100, and they'll just remain, if you want to say just, when referring to a gray knight, for their career. Could be. Because, um, well, look at it. Like they said, in 10,000 years, only one. Supreme Grandmaster Janus ever learned 666 of them. That means there is no other Grey Knights out there right now that know all 666 words. You might mix and match people together so that, you know, if you've got five people in a squad, there you go. There's your ritual you, that I was talking about before. You know, to compose your squad, you compare who knows what words of banishment. And now when you put the squad all together, they can uh, use all 666 words in their exorcism ritual. You've now got an entire storyline and workable model for Grey Knight martial arts. Is that cool or what? Well, we're going to keep going on. We've got more things. We're going to go into every single detail of the Grey Knights here. You will know more about the Grey Knights than you will know about anything in 40K. And I will show you. See you next time.